Hello, I'm Sys Tim, and in this video I'm going to show you the tools and techniques and my thought process as I make the everyday carry fit out in a Festool Top Rock. What you're about to see is a series of videos I made while I fitted out the Festool Top Rock. Now this is a very long video, there was just a lot of content, it was hard to edit down. My intent is not to necessarily make a step-by-step -step guide, but if you choose to watch through this or skip to certain parts, you'll hear my thought process as I go through and place the items inside the everyday carry and make decisions about what to include. You also hear me think through the materials that I use and the techniques in fitting this out. You'll see that I evolved my ideas throughout the build of this. Enjoy, and of course, if you have any comments, please leave them below. I'm gonna give you a little bit of a thought process as I go through and uh, try and figure out how to fit out my top rock. So with the Festool top rock, I wanna make this my everyday carry. I like the speakers. Um, I like the sound that comes out of it. And when I say everyday carry for me, I'm a remodeler, I'm a handyman. Um, I, I don't do those things full time during my day. So this is more like evenings, weekends, going to friend's house, going to relative's house, helping them out, doing stuff, certainly on my own property as well. And I also own some rental properties. So when I go to those rental properties. So in my everyday carry, there's a few things that I'd like to fit in. Now I've got a bit here. I don't know if I'm gonna fit it all in. Uh, but that's part of this process is kind of moving around, figuring things out. Um, some of the things that I'll walk through that I want to try and fit in. First is some of my safety gear, gloves, safety glasses. I just, I wear gloves a lot when I work out. Just want to protect my hands. Safety glasses, depends what job I'm doing. I'll put those on. You know, other jobs don't need them on when I'm like, say, changing out a doorknob, right? So I'd like to fit that stuff in. <clears throat> Although I should say, I could build just a uh, personal protective equipment sustainer as well with a bunch of other PPE stuff. That's maybe for another episode. Another thing that I always want in there is uh, some marking tools. So I picked up this uh, Pika German company, Pika Marking Systems. I've seen these uh, markers starting to show up. So I've got some long net markers, uh, some pencils, which have some different kind of inserts depending on the marking I'm doing. This is more like a crayon. This is a little bit more like a white marker. I love these guys. I've been using these just as I've been doing some plumbing around my house or working in my workshop. This is a pretty thick graphite kind of pencil. Um, it's been great stuff. So I'd like to see if I can fit this in. Now this case is pretty nice, uh, but this, again, it's gonna take up a bit of space if I use that case. I've got a couple different flashlights here. Uh, this one I use a lot just as a general area. It's easy to set up uh, when I'm under a sink or going into the attic. This one's really, really bright. These are both Milwaukee flashlights. Uh, they're both USB rechargeable, which is important to me. I don't wanna be fiddling around with batteries out on the job site. The next thing I use a lot is a tape measure. Um, I love these Comlon, if that's saying it right. I love these Comlon tape measures. This particular one is both metric and English, or metric and standard. Uh, I like that sometimes if I'm messing around with like sustainers or other products that I bring in, I might want the metric, you know, of course, building the houses, things like that. You're gonna want the, the standard usually, at least here in the US. Another thing I use a bit is a laser tape measure. Now, when I go and I'm uh, reviewing a property, I want to quickly get measurements for like flooring, things like that. This uh, laser tape measure is just real quick and handy. Um, so I'd like to fit that in there. Now a knife, I carry a couple different knives. This is just a general opening knife. It's actually probably a different knife that I'd put in here. It's a little bit more of a blade knife and actually has a screwdriver built in the back. So I'll show you that when I get that one down and around here. I don't need both knives in there, but I would like to get one. And then uh, something else I'd like to fit in is an external battery pack. Now this one's kind of fancy. I believe I got this off a of Kickstarter a couple years ago. Uh, really beefy size battery pack. It's got a little bit of an OS so you can adjust things. What I really like is that it's not just USB outputs. You can actually do like a DC voltage output. So sometimes you might have, uh, like you could use this as like a wall wart replacement. So I'd like to fit that in there. Now with the top rock, you can charge this thing up. It's got a battery in there, right? And then there are slots here where you can plug in your phone and you can charge off of that battery. I'm just wanting a little bit extra oomph, a little bit extra battery power, um, create another outlet. And then I'll tell you, one of the things that I'm really looking forward to seeing how I fit out in here is actually this quad lock. Now you might've seen these advertised online. I've been using quad locks for several years now. What it is is you see this pattern here if I pull out my phone and show you the back of my phone, there's also the pattern there. So these things can lock together. I've been using clawed locks on my uh, bike when I go out I'm biking uh, long distances or even inside when I'm biking, I just need my heads up display. 
I use it in my car when I'm driving, again, like a heads up display. And there's plenty of times when I'm on a job site, I, let's say I'm doing some sort of tiling, something like that. I've got my gloves on, I got my hands dirty, I'm in, you know, grout, whatever. Uh, but I want to have my phone set up so I can use, say, the voice feature to set a timer if I'm doing something, or if I just want a heads up to kind of see what the dings are that are coming in uh, without having to pull my phone out of my pocket. Uh, so I'm hoping to set that up on there. Maybe, maybe make it so a USB cord can kind of come out here through, through the, uh, the edge of the case. Um, I've got a couple different uh, sustainer inserts. Now these out of the sustainer 3M and L size sustainers. I got a couple different sizes of those around with this one. I've got some USB cables that I plopped in there that I need for say charging my phone, charging my uh, Milwaukee flashlights. Um, so I might use those as organization. One other thought I had is if I open up this top rock here, I'm curious on how I'm going to maybe try and use this face. Now there are some nice instructions here. Uh, so I want to see if maybe using some sort of screws or inserts here um, so I don't have to destroy or say glue to that. Might, maybe I'll be able to put some things on that face. For the insides, I'm looking at a couple different options. Again, haven't settled on anything. The first one would be to say this uh, cross cut foam. I've only started carrying this recently at the sustainer store. It's nice, you can put it in the bottom of a sustainer 3M. If I hold it up there, ah, get it going the right way. That sits down in there and what it does is it creates a pretty level surface. The foam sits maybe just a little proud of this uh, double cross or this, I think it looks more like a hashtag or a sharp pound sign. Um, Another foam that I have is uh, this, uh, again, for a Sustainer 3M. It's a pretty squishy kind of foam. It's the kind of foam that I generally think about when I think about a camera. I could put, oops, turn that one around as well. I could set that one on top of the cross foam, put that in there. Um, I could uh, you know, cut into this a little bit, create those cavities. Yet another foam option I am considering is this foam. Now, this I think I got from Kaizen Insert several years ago. Uh, this is actually, you may notice, it's kind of cut out for the T-Lock style. And what Kaizen Inserts does is they actually route it down here uh, so you get a little bit of a profile. Uh, I don't know if that's coming through on the camera there. Uh, so I thought about I could put that in there and then since it's nice Kaizen foam, I can you know, cut out slots to put the, uh, the tools in there that I'd like to do. And the final thing I'm looking at is uh, my very own Sustainer 3 inserts. Um, I've just started prototyping these here in the uh, Sustainer lab. Um, this is one of my prototypes. So I just may do this. I may do, say, the crosscut foam and then put this in there and then build some dividers or glue some foam on that. Uh, so those are all the options that I'm looking at. So I'm just going to kind of leave the camera running and talk through the process as I go ahead and work on this. Um, you may notice uh, I hold the Sustainer a bit here. I might have to find some way to hold it down. It's just this thing is so top heavy. It's got multiple speakers in there. It's got the battery, the electronics. Uh, so if you let go, it's going to tip back. Once you get the stuff in here, it's going to be just fine. But uh, while it's empty here, it's nice to have just a little bit of weight there to make sure it uh, balances out. Um, all right. So I'm just kind of thinking through this. Uh, I'm going to use this, this wood cutout to kind of think about my placement of devices. Uh, one thing I noticed before when I was doing some fit outs is uh, you want to think about weight distribution a little bit. Um, if you're going to be carrying it like a briefcase or if you're going to be carrying it like this, you don't want, say, all the heavy objects over here and then the light objects over here. It just doesn't feel balanced in the hand. Now, you know, you're going to be just fine, but you're going to feel that imbalance. It's still going to work. Um, so the battery pack being the heaviest option. Um, I probably want to try and put that somehow in the center. I'm going to think about cables. If I'm, I don't know for sure, but if I want cables plugged in while this is inside the sustainer, I need to have some sort of uh, clearance here for the cables to route, or I maybe need to get some like 90 degree angle cables. So if this one to be pushed up a little bit closer here and I just need to make that sharp turn, I might want some 90 degree cables. This uh, Pika marking box. I really like this carrying box. It does, or this carrying case, but man, that does take up a lot of space. It doesn't make it quick grab either. You know, I'd have to open it up. It's a nice book. You know, if I had maybe an open top toolbox or something like that, 
Maybe I'd want that, but what I do like though is like, I love these little straps in here. That's uh, rather nice and handy, um, that black color. So I wonder, I mean, I could, I could make a spot for this, but look at that. It's just gonna take up the whole side of the sustainer really, not leaving room for anything else. Um, I could put, let's say a divider in here so that this could be over here. I could, I could pop these out. I could put in something like, say one of these bot boxes. You know, and I could put the markers in here. That makes them a little bit loose, a little bit jiggly. Um, so I'm not necessarily a fan of that. And then uh, another thought that I had was I could possibly take this to like my bandsaw, something like that, and then just cut along here. Just cut on this side, just to the left of that sewn seam there. Um, I don't know if I could clean that up, but if I cut that off, and then on this side, cut just to the right of the sewn seam. And then I wonder if I could somehow affix that to the lid. I gotta look at my clearances, see if my clearances would still work. And then I could be, it could be on the lid. So it could be, no, it's gonna make the lid a little bit more heavier, but it could be right there on the lid opening up. Uh, I could do something a little bit shallower here then. Uh, but then that makes it easy grab as well if I did that. So that's an option. Um, so if I do have some cables, those could tuck in. You gotta think about sometimes, you know, do you want the tool down like that and you're reaching in, whether it's in foam, you're gonna have little finger holes, you can grab it out, or do you want, say, something like that? You know, this, this has the depth that the tape measure could be like that. You reach in and grab it as long as you got, you know, some finger grabs around that. Um, I don't know. Sometimes you just gotta play around, kinda see what strikes your fancy from a, an aesthetics point of view. I'm kinda looking at aesthetics. I'm kinda looking at maybe similar jobs, kinda trying to group things together. That fit in there. Then you'd have a little bit more room for this. Um, might not have much room for cable sticking out. I don't know, this could maybe go on its side, give you a little bit of space. Something else you could do with this dish um, is you could, well, in this case, this is a small enough foam. It might, the phone might fit in there. But sometimes, you know, when I'm at work, I like to take any uh, wallet or I really don't carry change anymore, but keys or something like that. Just nice to have a dish that I could drop it into a known place just to, I don't know, depending on what I'm doing, make my pockets later, give me space. Uh, so if I have a bigger, bigger container here, it maybe gives me the option to drop in that sort of stuff. Now it's probably gonna collect the random insert bit, things like that that get lost in my pocket as well. I don't necessarily have to have both flashlights in here. Um, might be nice though. I don't know. I've wondered too, like my glasses fit in there, my gloves fit in here. So I don't know if I had a container with glasses and gloves, then you, you know, I could always drop in something like earplugs or something like that too, if need be. I don't know, what if I wanted to make this symmetrical? What if I wanted to try and do something like that? I should, you know, there's just lots of little ways. I, I've just found that, you know, I sit here, I play with it, and then I wanna ask a lot of what ifs. What if I do this? And, and it's not, uh, you know, I sit there in my mind and I can imagine this stuff too, but it's, it's not necessarily the same as to, you sit here and you start playing with it because it's like, I can imagine this, but it's like, oh man, that's a tight clearance. And then you start thinking about, well, is there foam here? Is there a divider? How, how am I actually segmenting this? And I need to leave room for that right here, this box, it's getting pretty close to this back edge here. So it's like, I want to position that. So there's plenty of room there. This looks like I would be able to grab it. This one though, feeling, feeling kind of tight there. And I wonder if you wanted to, you know, put the knife in there. Probably couldn't stand the knife up, but might be able to put it at a little bit of an angle so its butt sticks out. And then you can easily grab that. I don't know, maybe this guy's not going to fit in here. Something else, too, that, uh, at least for me, that I got to think about is um, the height. So, again, it's like you can sit here, you look at this plan view. You can figure out kind of your placements, but if I truly do want to fit this on the top, somehow I need to start thinking about height as well. What, 
what's my varying height here. So if we open this up and uh, actually let me go over here. I'm going to grab another prototype. This one happens to have the hole in it. Just drop that in there. I suppose I could use the one with the hole, doesn't matter. But uh, if I drop that in there and I put that in there, I can see that there's a little bit of clearance here, but you gotta recognize this guy also pokes down some. So, I mean, I get in there, I just kind of look at that. There's not much. There's actually only maybe a half inch, maybe even less. Once I uh, look at that and that's, whew, that's not really gonna allow a lot of room if I have that box there. I'm not gonna be able to put those markers Maybe in the center. I don't know. This guy sticks up a fair bit. Um, you know, if you tried to arrange it, put this guy in the center so the screen goes this way, and then maybe you had some of these flatter. E, that guy's not going to fit there. But if I had some flat things here in the center, you know, that something that could be recessed a little bit, and then maybe this guy can come in sit there right in the center. Yeah, you would got to look out for that. Well, it's going to clear it. As long as I'm above that line, it's going to clear that. But I could look out for that. Hmm. That actually might work if I did something like that. But what I don't have in here is this guy. And this is really my preferred flashlight on the job site. I don't know. Is that going to be... That sticks up too tall. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Uh, another thing you can think about when you're doing this um, is layers. So if you have a, a taller sustainer, let's say you uh, want to put in something like a box. Well, you could actually stack boxes kind of like that, right? Again, assuming you have a taller, you could stack boxes or you can make it so that you have some sort of pull out, right? And you have some things underneath it. Um, I hope to do some, some fit outs like that in the future or maybe, uh, maybe you got your abrasives say on top, you can lift that tray out easily, set it aside and you got your, sand, uh, your sanding tools and other things underneath or vice versa, right? Uh, the tools on top and you got your abrasives kind of hidden underneath. Um, so thinking this through, so this guy, not a lot of clearance here for some of the cables. I can, in fact, plug a cable in there. What does that look like? This is a USB-C cable. Well, you know, the tape measure might be out, though, by the time I plug in a cable. I don't know. Oh, huh? here's a kind of more of the standard USB cable. That's going to be here on this side, though. So that could give a little bit of room there if that's justified up. That might work. That actually might work. This could, guy could come this way even a little bit. If I did that, I don't know. I wonder how far, I don't know. That's gotta be over here a little bit more. No, that's just right on the edge. Right on the edge there. You know, this guy could just lay flat here. You know, what if I just laid him flat? It seems kind of like a waste of space, but again, I've, I'm doing that. I know you could do that. For that guy here, somehow this guy still has to fit in. You know, I can always just keep a knife there too, right? I don't know, what do you think? Am I squeezing in too much? You could put a different tape measure over here. Let's say you always got two tape measures. You like two tape measures. You could put a second tape measure in there. Yeah, something I can always jettison is just the, just this guy. I, you can always jettison the case, although this is nice on my belt as I'm walking around a job site. Um, so you can see it's a, uh, Sometimes it's Tetris. Sometimes you got more of an uh, opinion. Maybe you have a smaller set of things, very fixed size. You've got more of an opinion here. Because it's an everyday carry, it gets to be a bit more like my purse, right? Or, and I got to recognize, I'm going to have other toolboxes, right? Obviously, I'm not fitting in like, you know, 
screwdrivers and some multi-tool screwdrivers or things like that where you just need some bits. Maybe I could though. Maybe that's uh, what's good to kind of fit here. But um, I just want to think of this one as I love having my tunes around. What other things do I need on a job site so that these things can travel together, right? And then as, uh, as I get closer to making this, I want to figure out, you know, make sure there's clearance for my fingers for things. So I'm uh, sitting here thinking this through. One thing I didn't mention is that the um, Festool Top Rock comes with a charger. Now, I guess, uh, again, in my workflow, what I'm thinking is, being that this is like an everyday carry, an everyday grab, um, for me that means I come home, I park my tools somewhere. I don't have a, a van, a work van that I fit out. Um, and so I will actually probably have this charger plugged into a wall and the cable for charging this just right there so that you know when this gets to its home in my workshop, uh, I would plug it in and charge it. Um, so that being said, I don't feel like I need to fit this charger. It is a wall wart, uh, you know, and a, and a bit of a cord here. It's in this nice pouch, but I don't feel like I need to fit it in here. I guess if I was in a pinch, if I was going somewhere and I knew it was going to be gone for like a week, might be using it a lot, things like that, maybe I could, uh, you know, fit it in this, this pocket. Again, another reason to kind of have a bigger one. Or maybe I jettison, you know, some of the PPE because that might, you know, if I'm going somewhere with a bunch of tools, that might fit in somewhere else. I could fit this here so that it stays together. Um, that's my, my thought there. When I think about, let's see, when I think about this front piece, now again, I'm, I'm going to take the risk. I'm willing to try and modify this sustainer a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to make four holes to mount this guy on here. Now I'm thinking like, do I want to try and center it in this slot? Do I want to try and move it to the side? One of the things I would like to do is fit in an external USB port. So one of the things I looked at was, hey, just you know, do some sort of rounded cutout here because then the cable can kind of leap through without getting you know, pressed down here. Um, that's an easy way, you know, because you can just take like a wrap file or just some sort of small little uh, punch and you can kind of create you know, a half circle or a U-shaped uh, cable keep out that a cable could go through. I've got uh, this one kind of cable uh, USB mount, but I'm going to look at some others on Amazon. There's a lot of stuff that come from like the RV or the marine industry that allows you to make a nice little cutout and you can put a USB. This one's kind of nice because if I say justify this to the left, I don't know if you can see that on camera, I can still possibly fit it in here. So that way, lid can be closed. I can plug in, you know, say a short charging cable to my phone, have it connected to that external battery still, uh, that sort of thing. Um, or if I wanted to just lay my phone here on top. So for uh, mounting this, um, I want to get the right kind of hardware so that they sit flush. And then on the back side, what I'm thinking is I may, may epoxy or glue in, say, just a, a small, you know, say three millimeter, six millimeter kind of piece of plywood here or a piece of plastic. I'll look to see what I have in a scrap pile. That's just to reinforce this a little bit. I mean, it's pretty strong already, but being that this is going to be on there, I'm going to be putting screws through it. You know, this could, you know, somehow get cranked on or whatever. I just thought maybe I'd uh, thicken up that, uh, that wall there a little bit. And then uh, one more thing I want to point out here with this guy is uh, there's a collar here. So this guy can uh, pop off. And then I can say, again, drop that in here. So the part that's sticking out isn't actually too bad. You know, I don't have to travel with this whole piece sticking off of it. Uh, yeah, it does create, you know, a bit of extra clearance. This part is going to be essentially screwed in permanently on there. Um, but that's something I'm willing to do for, say, the convenience that I'm going to get out of it. Your choices may differ. Uh, I should mention that there's other kinds of adapters if you wanted to I don't know, have it stick out farther, or if you actually wanted to use it some sort of tool holder or whatever, they, they offer some different mounts, uh, some other you know, ways to, to fit that out. So what I'm going to do now is uh, go gather up some more of my tools, materials, kind of see what I have in my scrap bin uh, for wood, plastic, that sort of thing as I think about this layout. I'm not finalized on this layout. Uh, it has something I've thought about a little bit, but I'm not finalized on this. So. The other thing I might do here is just uh, take a break for a little bit, let some things cook in the subconscious part of my mind, and then come back to it, see how it is. Okay, 
I've played around with this layout a little bit. Uh, again, trying to stoke my mind, just randomly placing some object on there and seeing what fits around it. I keep coming back to this layout. A couple reasons. One, I've got these two containers here that can be, say, multifunctionals. Right now I've got, you know, USB and I'll have my uh, adapter when he's not hanging off here. I can have him in there. I can have my uh, gloves, glasses, and I decided to then, you know, my knife. I went and got the, the knife that I wanted to use here. Um, I can have him kind of fit just in there. He's not going to jiggle around too much because that lid gets pretty close to that. Anyway, these, these could be multifunctional. So let's say I want to put all my PPE in something else. I could use this to, like I said, toss my wallet, throw my keys, or maybe, you know, some screwdriver or something like that. Uh, another reason why I like this layout is uh, keep the center area sunken. I think I'm gonna, gonna go for trying to do some sort of modification here on my Pika marker kit um, where I can keep this center part. I'm gonna figure out how to mount it to the back so that essentially when the lid closes, that's gonna lay in there, something like that. It's just gonna barely fit, I believe. Um, so I literally like that idea, getting that to work out. And then I have this keep out area. now. Sometimes I do use two tape measures on site. So it's like, well, I can fit in a second tape measure. I get some nice symmetrical stuff. You know, maybe I could try and fit in another box just for general purpose. I've got an idea what I might do here in the future. For now, I'm just gonna leave it uh, blank. So kind of the next, next step for me to think through here is um, how do I wanna fit this out? Am I gonna do it all in foam? Am I gonna put in some sort of wood dividers here? My uh, inclination is to use this base plate, which is uh, kind of like the base plate. I want to see how I can use it. And then to take this uh, foam that I mentioned from Kaizen Inserts, it's been uh, routed out for the profile a little bit. I might uh, spray glue that to this piece of wood um, and then just do my carve outs here. So it gives me a nice solid under underbody underneath this. Uh, this, is, this place of plywood is only about three millimeters thick, so it's not going to add too much in height. It allows these things then to protrude out. Like these guys are going to be, you know, those guys are going to be pretty close. So I'm going to have to put some finger holes and things like that. But like things like the battery and whatnot, that's going to stick out. That's going to stick out a little bit there from, from that, which is okay. It gives me an option to grab it, kind of move things out. So that's, that's the approach I'm going to take here. I'll shoot some... Uh, video showing how I go through this. So what I'm doing now is I'm just, uh, again, thinking, uh, what I'm doing now is I'm thinking through how I actually want to do the build out, do the, the fit out. And then what I mean by that is in terms of uh, plywood, doing dividers, doing Kaizen foam or some sort of foam. I'm leaning towards the foam because I've got it here. Again, I've got uh, a three millimeter sheet base under there, kind of like this one, right, that I'm experimenting with. And so, and I'm gonna take this uh, Kaizen insert and I wanna spray glue that to the here. Uh, I've translated the design to here. I just wanted to think through a little bit more on clearances. When you've got um, the Sustainer 3, there's a little bit of a plastic inset because of the Sys 3 rails here on the side. Of course, if you're laying out on a plate like this, you're gonna be accounting for that already. Um, but I just wanted to, again, test things while I've been laying it out here. I moved the flashlight here or this uh, work light here to the center so it's near the other flashlight, just kind of grouping things a little bit. Uh, when I think about doing like a Kaizen insert, if I'm going to cut things out, I take something like this Bosch. I like this case, and I often do put this on my belt. Um, so, you know, I could store just the tool, but I'd like to, to have the case with it because the case has this kind of flange that sticks out. What it might mean is I cut out for this body and then I store it like that so that flange is a little bit on top there. So it actually might store a little bit upside down and then I can grab it using that belt loop there. Um, so the next thing might be to take a marker, trace out on the foam, something like uh, these two boxes. These are going to get cut all the way through the foam. Flashlight's probably going to get cut all the way through, through the foam come to think of it, these guys may all get cut all the way through the foam. Uh, the other option that I have at my disposal is I might, I might try it on the laser. I've not done any foam on my laser yet. It's a, a new tool. It's allowing me to produce, say, these inserts. So I just might take some dimensions and then I can do some simple rectangular cutouts from maybe most of this stuff and then just fine tune it with a knife after that. Um, but again, I'm 
I'm putting it in the sustainer, I'm thinking about clearances, both height clearances, which if I put this all the way down should be okay. Should double check that without the foam. And then just, you know, any other obstructions like this one, for instance, that's not gonna show up on the wood piece. Uh, also thinking about the lid here. So let's, uh, let's maybe do a clearance check. So let me pop this stuff out here one more time. And then, you know, don't rush the process. Think through the fit out. I mean, you can always redo a fit out, right? Um, you know, you might have to get some more materials, things like that. No one likes to waste materials. Um, but, you know, if your work needs change, make it so you can redo the fit out. But you can take your time here just to make sure you're doing the, the fit out the right way as best as you can the first time. Um, you don't want to rush around. If you're like me, you might only have so much time in the workshop, so you just want to make sure you're not wasting wasting effort either. Um, a little bit of preparation goes goes a long way. So here, if you get down, you look at it, there is uh, quite a bit of clearance here. And so even if I took this, which you may recall I'm going to put here, try and figure out a way to put that on the lid here. If I set that in there, now it, it's overlapping already, so it's going to be hard to close the lid. Um, but I can tell just by kind of looking at this nub here, like that is down plenty enough. It's going gonna, it's gonna to have some good clearance there. Um, makes me wonder if somehow, I don't know, somehow I can fit, fit out. I don't know if I cut, if I somehow cut this shape into here. That might be kind of cool if I could somehow just trace that whole shape and then find a way to just kind of screw that on. Yeah, yeah, that'll be a project, and that'll be a project. I think I want to work on this foam here. You know, one thing with using this Kaizen insert, I don't know if you can see it, is, you know, it's got a little bunch of shavings and stuff on it, and so you put it in and out of the sustainer a couple times while you're planting it out, and you get all these little black dust molecules everywhere. All right, so uh, here's what I've been doing. I uh, had thought about using this Kaizen insert, pre-CNC kind of fitting foam, and when I was looking around at my scraps, I found a fair hunk of the same height um, Kaizen foam, all black. So this looks like it's about, uh, it's about an inch and a quarter, maybe just under an inch and a quarter in height. I decided I wanted to, I decided to try and do it on the laser. I've not done any foam on the laser and I thought, why not give it a try? So what I did is I carefully measured the outline. Most of these are just rectangles, simple rectangles. I tried to get it pretty close. I used my calipers, kind of rounding up or rounding down depending on my confidence level. So I did an outline. Uh, I used Autodesk Fusion for that, but really it's just a, a 2D vector file. Um, and then I just cut it on the laser. I did some test runs just to figure out engraving size and depth and I am loving this. So I cut out the outline to match my board that's under here, my insert, wooden insert. And then this stuff just, it's pretty good. Like this one, you can see it bows out just a little bit. I guess you want a little bit of squeeze there, right? This one, it bows out just a little bit. I could have maybe had a little bit more room here, but man, that just, I'm really pleased with it. I need to come back through and maybe put some finger holes using uh, a copper pipe trick, I guess. Get a copper pipe, heat up the ends, and you can kind of make some uh, finger holes. So I'll try and capture that on video when I do that. But this stuff is just looking really good. So let's, uh, let's get that inside a sustainer here. Let's see if I can do a transfer. I've not uh, glued down yet the insert in the foam. <laughs> Soft close, thank you. Didn't, bash my fingers there. Let's see if we can get that in there. I've not uh, glued the foam to the wooden insert yet. Oh man, that is looking really sweet. I need to maybe fix the foam here in the corner. You can see how it's kind of popping up. I just need to maybe press that down. Probably be quite gentle with that when I am uh, right here. Let me pull this out. There we go, get that to sit down in there. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty good fit. Ooh, I'm liking that. So if I hold that up there, sorry, you get the shadow a little bit. That is looking really good, really, really good. Uh, I really like the engraving that I got here 
on the uh, SysTim and the Sustainer Store logo. Let's see, the sides are pushing in well. Woo! That is a thing of beauty. Man. So, uh, with that, let's see, I need to pull things out. I need to kind of spray glue that down. Uh, I'm going to use some of this uh, Super 77 spray adhesive. I think that's going to work well on the foam. I've not used it on the foam, but I'm pretty sure I saw a video where someone had used that on the foam. And then uh, next step, but it'll be tomorrow at this point for me, it'll be instant in your video time world. I need to figure out some sort of modification here, see how that's going to fit up here. You can clearly see we're going to have enough clearance here. Um, that's going to work out well. Oh man, I'm excited for this. It's going to be awesome. Oh, also the other thing I should do tomorrow is uh, work on that reinforcing plate I mentioned here and get this guy mounted. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on Amazon though, see if there's another kind of uh, USB mount. This one, I'm going to have to make a hole for this one, but there's not really a great way to mount it other than maybe just do some CA glue or some little bit of epoxy. Um, but I want to see if there's maybe like a, a more formal, really skinny kind of mount that I could put there. Oh, I should also point out the other thing I like uh, is if you look here on the side, all the ports there, kind of see it, all the ports there uh, on the battery bank are still exposed, even though, you know, it's, getting, it's in the foam. So that is going to work really, really nice, really nice. So I'm going to move on and work on another step here. You might recall that uh, got this uh, Pika pen insert and the goal here is to um, kind of fit it on this lid so that it closes in right in the spot and I need to figure out how I'm going to modify this uh, and so what I've done here is I've uh, got the top rock turned on its lid just because it's top heavy here I've uh, kind of got a thicker not quite a cardstock but a thicker paper that I have lined up on the edges here and I'm just going to take a knife and kind of trim around I want to make a template so then I can hold it up kind of determine if I'm going to make a, a wood piece that goes on top of here, if I'm going to try and reuse that uh, book that it came in. Uh, so we'll just follow along here. I'll grab uh, one of my X-Acto knives. I think it's got a gold blade on it. Might need a new one. We'll see how this goes. My goal here is just to kind of trim along the edge um, and make this uh, fit nice. So I've just got scotch tape to um, attach this in a couple spots along along the two of the straight edges here. That allows me to then trim just a couple other edges. So now I'm just gonna slice off my tape here, hopefully lift the tape off of here so it doesn't, don't have some lingering tape in the project. Not bad, not bad, okay, so that's, uh, that's going to be my template. I wanted to get the rounded corners. I wanted to get the proper height. You know, you can see this one's kind of a little bit matching of this. It gets me close enough. That's, and that's what I wanted. Um, I could, uh, I sat here, I guess, taking measurements and, you know, laser cut some template or printed out some template and then taped it and cut it with scissors. Uh, this seemed about just as fast here. Uh, so I'm feeling good about that. I'm going to go get some tape and tape down this other side. So my template's not floppy. I'm starting to study a little bit, think through how am I going to mount, you know, this cardstock or again, some piece of wood that I might cut, uh, something that uh, allows me to get those markers and pens kind of in that center target area. And I'm seeing there's screws in here for the assembly. And uh, I'm kind of wondering if I can just get like a longer screw, perhaps kind of go through whatever material I put here and then kind of go all the way through. So I'm just uh, reaching in here right now and I'm just going to try and pop out one of these screws. Ah, see if I can figure out. There we go. Should probably just take the lid off while I'm working on this. So there we go. It's just a machine screw. So no pointed head. All right. So off camera, I've done a little bit of work. I've uh, made this top insert. Uh, that holds the, the Pika uh, instruments, marking instruments. And uh, I'll insert some pictures here as I talk over what I did. I took the Pika folding book and I unfolded it out. I made a uh, template of the back lid here of the Festool 
top rock. And then I kind of laid this on there. I positioned it around a little bit just to kind of figure out the rough size. I didn't uh, obviously cut the corners exactly. But I um, went through with my X-Acto knife and I started cutting it down, taking off bits and pieces, taking off the edging. And I was really careful with the stitching because as you can see here, I reused that, uh, uh, that, that end embroidery. Or maybe it's not embroidery, but that end material, whatever it's called. I reused that here on the ends. Um, so I cut that up, I poked some holes in it, and I've got some uh, longer screws. These are like a, an M3 thread forming screw. I got those longer screws and I was able to take out screws that were in the Festool top rock and then put in these longer screws. I might dab those with a, a bit of paint. I uh, re-secured kind of these edges with a little bit of CA glue. I didn't go through and stitch it myself, uh, but I used CA glue. I really like the way it turns out. I think it looks just awesome. It's got tools at hand. It really makes this space more functional. And uh, my goal was to get this center part to line up here with this valley that these two would make together. And I love that soft close. It does, well, for the most part. You can see here, there's still a little bit of gap. And as I got in there and started looking at it, um, what's going on is right here, what you can see here is the tape measure with how it's sticking up just a little bit. I mean, it's about at the height of these containers, but it sticks up just a little bit. It's kind of just keeping it from getting that last little bit. Now I can push down, I can get that latch to go, but man, there's still, you know, a fair gap there and I'd like it to sit down better. So for instance, if I take out that tape measure and I have this go down, the gap closes up quite a bit. It's a little bit more squishy. Again, it's like, it's like a tight fit now between the lid and the foam there. I can get it to go easily, but you can see it's just, you know, just the smallest of gaps. It's just not still fitting just perfect. So what I'm thinking I might do is I'm gonna leave this guy alone. I want that to be the same, but what I'm gonna do is possibly take these containers, and since they're gonna be dedicated to this application, what I might do is just shave these down just a little bit, these, um, the prongs that make them be usable in the organizers. I might shave those down a little bit. Um, if I really wanted to get sophisticated, I suppose I could cut out that same pattern. I'd have to sit there and cut it up and everything, and it's just probably easier just to cut down. But if I uh, cut out that pattern in the wood, this would then even sit further down in the wood. I don't think I want to do that right now. I'm just going to uh, probably shave off the bottom. But for the tape measure, what I'm going to have to do here is if I can get you in on a close-up there. What I'm going to have to do is possibly change this from a vertical orientation that it is and make it into more of a flat orientation. Um, so I've already glued this foam onto this board. It's a bit of a bummer. Um, but while I'm working at that, looking at what i got to do there, I got in the parts and pieces I need to finish with my charging. So remember, I'm going to take this uh, uh, quad lock unit. I'm going to be mounting this here on the front. My plan is to make a, a stiffener here, just to kind of, you know, some sort of maybe three millimeter plywood, just a block to go in here, just to stiffen this a little bit, and then I can punch four holes, I can mount this on here. But I've decided just below that, I've got this kind of, sort of panel mount USB-C short cable. And the idea here is one end is going to go into this battery pack, and then the other end is going to mount, if I hold this up, it's going to probably mount right here is where I decided. I was at one point thinking, hey, do that over here, do it in this card slot area. That way, if I really bugger it up, I can cover it up with a card or something. But I think I'm going to go down here. By the time I put in this quad lock, you know, I just, I kind of like the idea of this being a little bit more centered on that hole. And it kind of just leaves a little open area here where if I take this cable out, you know, from the inside, you know, this is going to mount kind of in this location, sticking out just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna, there's a couple ways I could go about mounting this USB-C uh, port. This is made to go on like a bracket on the back of your computer. Let's imagine this is the wall of the sustainer here. So one thing I could do is I could take this and I could cut out the center kind of oval shaped hole, or and then I could cut out those two screw holes and I can mount it from the back. So if this is, if this is the front side, I'd put bolts in or screws in from the front side. That's going to hold it there. One thing to notice is when you plug in a USB-C cable, like it's designed to have a little bit of thickness there. I don't 
camera's not quite picking up. There we go. You can see that the cable sticks out just a little bit. The, the, the shell of the connector is just a little bit. So this gap here, right, would be the gap. The gap, this gap here would be the gap of the wall of the sustainer. And it actually, I think it's gonna be pretty close. The other thing I could do is, again, imagine this is the wall of the sustainer, is poke a little bit bigger hole and then just have this mounted on the front of the sustainer. So then I would through bolt from here through the sustainer and just put some sort of nut on the back. It's gonna, you know, it sticks out a bit more of a profile than this side is gonna stick out of the sustainer. It would look okay. Maybe it makes it a little bit easier to um, make a hole because instead of trying to make this precise USB-C hole, you're just trying to make a, a square hole that this connector could be threaded through. Um, well, I guess I'd have to make sure this end threads through. I don't know that that would work because this guy is a bit more beefier. So as I talk this out, um, yeah, actually, as I talk this out, I might have to, I might have to just try and replicate that. Maybe just two screw holes and a little bit of filing to kind of make it into that shape there. So I might have to do the rear mount on that. Let's see, let's see how I get along with that. All right, so let's look at uh, mounting this quad lock item on here. Um, so as I look at this quad lock item, I took the, the connector apart just so I can get easier access to the holes. I see that it has actually quad lock written on here, so I wanna make sure I get that right orientation. Now I have a choice. I definitely want to center it left and right, but I have a choice. Do I also want to center it top and bottom? It's, it's tempting just to kind of leave it here pressed against maybe say the bottom or the top of the sustainer just to not have to worry about that gap, you know, keep things nice and level. Um, let's see if this guy is on here. I'm thinking maybe you know, if this guy is on here, Maybe I should put my phone on there, see what it looks like. Now, of course, I've got a, an older iPhone. I don't even remember what model year it is right now. Uh, it's old enough that I've forgotten. I will be getting a new one here at some point, but if I put that on, let's look at that. If I put that on, yeah, I, I guess it's not gonna matter whether it's centered at the top or centered at the bottom. You really just can't tell. And center at the bottom gives you a little bit, or at the top gives you just a couple more millimeters of, you know, if you wanted to do this, angle it or angle it out. Um, if I think about it in terms of the connector, you know, if I got this at the top, I got just a little bit more room for my fingers to get in here. So maybe that's what I would have to do. Okay, let's let's put it let's put it to the top here. I'm just gonna kind of eyeball this. <laughs> eyeball it. Pulls out my micrometers. That's what one of the comments is gonna say. 11.4. Hey, not bad. 11.4. Uh, and of course, my marking tools are in here. Uh, which one do I want to do? Hey. Double check this again since I moved. Maybe slightly. So I got my long nose Pika marker here. I'm gonna just kind of mark these holes. And what I'm gonna do here is I've got a tray of hardware. Uh, I think this is about an M5, an M5 screw. Um, and that M5 screw is gonna fit in there quite nicely flush um, it's made for that and then I'll put a nut on the back I don't know maybe just a little bit of removable Loctite or something like that just to make sure it doesn't rattle loose um, sometimes you can put just a dab of CA glue um, but I think I'll do that my marks are transferred so I think the next thing to do is actually to cut out the panel or cut out the little element I want to use on the back side here that reinforcing plate uh, when I cut out that reinforcing plate, I want to leave a keep out area uh, for the connector, for that panel mount connector on the back side. 
that's going to be near the bottom though here. So uh, no problem. I'm going to take some measurements and then uh, perhaps just cut that on the laser here. Okay, I went over to Lightburn, which is the software I use uh, to operate my laser. Catted up something here. It's about uh, about 86 by. No, I can't remember if I made it 80, 83. The thing I needed to do was um, watch out for this lip here. And then I left a keep out for this connector when it uh, plugs in the back side because I didn't want the extra, when it plugs in, I didn't want that extra distance that really mess up the connector. So this guy, he's just going to get, uh, you could just set in there or I could uh, kind of glue that guy in there using CA glue. I think the next step is to try and figure out how I'm going to transfer the marks, the design of this, to the sustainer so that I can uh, drill and machine that out somehow. Kind of makes me wonder if I should do some sort of ink, but I'd want it to be washable. I wonder if I could somehow ink that and kind of line it up and press it in. Um, I'd say let me know in the comments if you know of something like that. I'm going to probably go check out my children's art kits and see what they have just for some maybe ink I could use. Again, something that's going to I'd be able to wash off the sustainer. Uh, before I went and tried to see if there was ink from children's art kit, I thought maybe maybe I could try something else. It's not going to be an exact science here. I um, got some of these M3 screws now that I'm putting them in. I don't know if they're going to work. I wonder if I could somehow get these M3 screws, have them poke out just a little bit, and then kind of just tap them, kind of like a little, I don't know if that, you'd call that a transfer punch. Just some way to kind of get them to poke out a little bit, but the, the head of the screw, if I had some either longer screws or um, some sort of M3 rod here, the head of the screw is just kind of interfering with the connector at the moment. I do have this other punch, but that's not going to fit through this M3 threaded hole. Well, you make some mistakes making. You got to learn from it, right? Use sharp tools. Um, bugger. It looks pretty bad, doesn't it? Yeah. But part of this is I need to still route that out. Um, shoot, one's high and one's low. That's terrible. Very bad. Well, what I'm going to do here, you know, the other thing I could possibly do here, where did my connector go? The other thing I could do here is, um, you know, the third option is mount this flush, right? Um, cut out a big enough hole so that this whole thing just sits flush on here. So essentially you would take that and then trace it and then you want to cut just inside of it until this mounts flush and then you can just do a little bit of glue around it, something like that. You know, that might be the route I go. It's designed for panel mounting a little bit more, but, uh, and I wanted the screw mounts just to kind of make it removable if you ever needed to, but man. Well, this is the way it is in making. Sometimes you just got to adjust the plan or you got to learn from these mistakes, be more careful. Catch you up on where I am. I was working on trying to fit in this panel mount uh, connector. I didn't like the way it was working. Um, it just wasn't going to look well enough. It wasn't going to protrude. Uh, it was quite fiddly, the small detail to try and get in there. So I found a new panel mount connector that I'm going to do. It's kind of got a, an overlay and it's got this rectangular hole. So what I did was I just cut out a little rectangular template, if you will. Uh, for the inside, what represents the hole that's needed. I then uh, taped that on there and I used my, 
an X-Acto knife uh, to cut that out. Uh, attempt that I was doing for that original panel mount, but the bezel around this new panel mount, that's going to cover that up. So I think that's going to be pretty clean. Uh, I took the risk, that new piece isn't going to be here for a little bit yet, I took the risk to try and uh, make this hole though, because I want to move on and I want to work on the um, quad lock mount next. Okay, next let's work on making the mount for the quad lock here. So I've got a, uh, a laser cut piece that I have in here, this is just, I feel like I just want to make this a little bit thicker uh, for uh, mounting this on there. Um, and then putting the bolt or a bolted washer on the back. I'm going to be using M5 screws. I've got a kit of those of different lengths, but the M5s make that nice and flush there. Um, so I've marked out the holes on here where I want to drill using my Pika long nose template pen. I'm going to... Uh, I guess take my center punch, try and punch that out, and then I need to get a metric drill bit set, but uh, I'm going to use a 964, no, no, sorry, I'm going to use a 730 seconds to drill the ultimate hole, but I'm going to start with a, a smaller hole and then kind of work up to it, just to try not hog out too much material at a time, but let's see if I can get pretty close to center to get these first marks in here. Even if you weren't going to have that wood piece back behind it permanently, it's probably good to have it there just as a, when you're doing this for sure, so you're not cracking the plastic, but then uh, just as you're drilling this out, not blowing it out on the back side. It's plastic though, you can, uh, the plastic you can always just, you know, quickly with a knife or a file, just knock off any burrs. There we go. Got some centers punched. Let's go ahead and drill this out a little bit here. If your drill bit was sharp, you might be able to use the larger drill bit. In fact, now that I think about it, it may actually be kind of difficult to use the larger, to do the step drill uh, if it doesn't catch in that hole just right. But take it slow and easy. Let's see how it goes here. Switch over right now. All right. I like using a hand tool in this case because I got some good. Uh, I guess you know vertical is not vertical. You can get close enough with your hand, but uh, what it is is I like the variable speed trigger. It really kind of lets you adjust here um, to how the material is kind of biting into your tool. All right, we got that done. So let's, uh, now of course I've got blowout on here. So I'm gonna have to go clean that up and then uh, we'll fit this in. So I've got the, uh, the burrs kind of cleaned up. You can see there's a bit of blowout I had. Maybe I should have sandwiched another piece on the back of the plywood, um, but it's gonna be okay. I can mount it so that the ugly side is, is in. Um, no, I can't, I'm gonna have to mount it. So the ugly side is still out. Just means this thing wasn't perfectly centered. I can see now if those lines are centered, I see that quite clearly. It could have been over just a little bit, but it's gonna be close enough for the work we're doing. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So now the question is what size screw we're gonna use. I've got, uh, let's see, looking at my chart here. I've got uh, M5 by 20. That looks like it might be a bit too long to get that pressed in there. There we go. Yeah, that sticks out a bit too much. Let's come back M5 by 15. Ooh, that might be just fine. Just fine. But we'll double check. Okay, I have an M5 by 12. We'll leave the 15 here. I'm going to say maybe two or three millimeters less, but um, no, nope, there's just not enough threads to catch on anything there. So M5 by 15 it will be. We'll need four of those. One, two, three. There we go. That's not too bad, huh? I like that. This is gonna work. Yeah, and there's just a little bit of thread sticking out on here. I can tighten those down. They'll smush into the plywood just a little bit. All right, I've got a eight millimeter socket here. I'm just gonna use that to hold the nut. I've got my three millimeter, switch my hand there, three millimeter Allen key, and I'm just gonna tighten this down a little bit. Here the wood creak just a little bit as I get that in there. Just snugging things up. 
I like it. Let's have a look at that. See what it what it looks like here. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> that looks real nice. We can then take our our mount here. Can I make sure that's seated in there well? This mount, you know, can rotate this way. I'm going for it to be up and down at the moment. And then we tighten that collar. There we go. And then you can loosen the collar in order to move the, the ball joint there. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Pop my phone out. There you go, you mount it at the angle. You can hear that click in. Woo! You now I can loosen the collar. I can adjust it if I wanted to just have it sit like this. You know, go whatever which way. Tighten that up. Very nice. So we'll just gotta wait for that USB uh, panel mount device to come in. So if I come back here, I'm gonna clean this out a little bit. Um, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to do some modifications here. Uh, one to get the tape measure to sit kind of in this orientation. So I, I'm gonna probably just hand carve it since I've. Um, since I've already glued the foam to the wood, I'll probably just hand carve it. I might fill in that, that space a little bit, but recess this down. The other item that I'm gonna have to do is, uh, I'm gonna have to figure out uh, some extra USB cable routing. So the, the panel mount device that's coming, I'm gonna have to hollow out a little bit in here so that it can sit in that foam as well. But the cable on it, maybe the cable is like eight inches or 12 inches long, I don't remember now. It's definitely not a short one. Uh, coming over to the battery here. Uh, so I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that extra cable. Maybe I can tuck it here along the edges. I don't think there's really room at the point to kind of like wind it in underneath the foam. Maybe there is. If I Maybe if I cut out like a larger piece here, I could wind under the foam and then just put some sort of foam cover down that this flashlight can sit in. That might work. So I've been doing some more work off camera. This thing's getting really close. Let's review where things stand. Let's see, on the front here, I've mounted the quad lock mount. I've cut the hole for the, the panel mount USB-C outlet. I've added the sustainer store uh, text there on the handle. That's a direct to film transfer from some previous work that I've done. And I've created this uh, card, a little bit of a light gray background System Everyday Carry. That's me. Let's open it up and check what's inside. This is the part I'm quite excited for. Let's review what I've done on the top. I've mounted this Pika book to hold all the Pika pens and markers here. I put the Pika badge there. I put it again, another like direct to film transfer sustainer store logo sticker there. I really like the way that turns out. This stuff is nicely centered so it fits in this section. Now down here, you might remember that the tape measure was sticking up. I had to move it, have it laid down, get a little bit more clearance below these bins. Uh, also, I pull one of these bins out. When you take a look in there, you're gonna see that there are now cutouts. I had to do some precise measurements and get some cutouts done. Again, I use my laser. Uh, the purpose is the bottom of the bot bins has the, uh, extrusions there that help it to fit in an organizer. I didn't want to turn, cut those off. I thought about it, I, but I thought I'd try and uh, hollow that out a little bit there. So that helps to push these down just a little bit more, give it just a couple more millimeters of clearance really is what all it needed. I've got my gloves and knife and uh, safety glasses over there. I could drop in some earplugs as well. This bin, it's got the uh, quad lock uh, mounting part. So I pull that out. And then I've got a handful of different USB cables. So I'm going to use this one as a, just a short one once I get that panel mount set up. But I've got other ones. There's a kind of DC to DC cable here. The power supply has a DC to DC adapter there. Um, I've got, uh, this is like a DC to prong. Sometimes you got a battery where you got to put the prongs on it. I've got the charging cable that's used for the flashlights and the work light in there, and then just a straight up USB-C to USB-C cable, maybe for a laptop or a tablet. 
I've got an extra ring in there. That's the ring I put on the back of my phone when it's not on here, just to help me hold it or prop it up. And a couple little odds and end tools related to the quad lock. And then over here, I've got the Bosch tape measure, my laser tape measure. Um, and that's it, man. I'm loving the way this thing goes. So the next thing to do is to get that USB part in and then kind of figure out cable routing. It might be a little bit tricky. I might have to yet do a, a third fit out here with the uh, tape measure. We'll see how it goes. That's it.